Intel made a huge mistake by not including PCIe 4 in its 10th generation processors. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So back in May, Intel released its 10th generation Comet Lake S desktop processors to combat Ryzen 3000 and to my surprise they once again did not include PCIe 4 support. And to make things worse, Intel doesn't plan on fully supporting PCIe 4 until their 11th gen Rocket Lake S processors launch later next year. Meanwhile, AMD supported PCIe 4 as far back as July 2019, and although in real world cases there really isn't too much of a difference between PCIe 3 and PCIe 4, at least when it comes to graphics devices, there are actually some reasons as to why it's a good idea to have PCIe 4 right now, and beyond that, it's just a huge marketing blunder for Intel to not have PCIe 4 when Nvidia is releasing its newest graphics cards with PCIe 4 support. That's going to be a big problem. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about why this is a problem. So having PCIe 4 support on your platform is really important right now mainly because of two factors. The first factor would be SSDs. Now there have been PCIe 4 SSDs available for some time now and if you're on an Intel platform you just haven't been able to take advantage of them. Now, saying that, the first PCIe 4 SSDs that came out really weren't that much more impressive than the PCIe 3 ones that are available right now, but by the end of this year, there are going to be some really, really fast PCIe 4 SSDs probably even faster than what's available in the consoles, which for PC enthusiasts is a big deal, so not having that support yet is going to be a big problem for Intel and it's going to make a lot of people want to switch over to AMD. Now, the second reason as to why having PCIe 4 is really important right now is because although there have been some PCIe 4 graphics devices out from AMD for a little while now, you know, the difference in performance between 3 and 4 has been pretty negligible with those cards because they're more of a mid-range graphics card and they're really not going to push the PCIe bus that much. Now, with Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3000 series that's set to launch very, very soon, there might actually be a small performance difference and, you know, for most consumers that go out there and buy stuff, they don't really know that there's not going to be a big performance difference between PCIe 3 and PCIe 4. They're going to want to just go out and buy their new RTX card and see that it says PCIe 4 and they want to be able to be PCIe 4 compatible. Now, they're not going to know that there's only going to be maybe a 2% difference or maybe no difference whatsoever. They're just going to look at that box and they're going to look at their motherboard and go, it's not compatible. I need a new motherboard. So a lot of those people are going to be driven over to AMD, especially if they're first time builders. They're just not going to look into it. And so that's the main reason as to why this is a huge marketing blunder for Intel. They're going to be seen as essentially not compatible with these new RTX cards by a lot of people who just aren't that into PC gaming. They just want to go out and buy their stuff and use it. And honestly, there could actually be a small performance difference, at least in really high resolutions, between PCIe 3 and PCIe 4 on Nvidia's fastest card. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of things here that allude to the fact that, yes, there might be a small performance difference. So the first one comes from Tech Power Up, where they were testing a 2080 Ti on on PCIe 3 X8 and X16, and they say, quote, we're happy to report that the RTX 2080 Ti is finally able to overwhelm PCIe Gen 3 X8, posting a small but tangible 2 to 3% performance gain when going from Gen 3 X8 to Gen 3 X16 across resolutions. So at least according to Tech Power Up, you do need something that has more bandwidth than an X8 connection on PCIe 3 for the current 2080 Ti. So if there's another card that's significantly faster than the 2080 Ti, like let's say 50, 60, or even 70% faster, which I doubt it'll be that fast, but just for example, well, we might be running into a case shortly here where the RTX, say, 3080 Ti or 3090 might saturate a PCIe 3 X16 slot. Now, is that actually going to happen? We don't know for sure, and it's unlikely that there will be a big performance difference, but let's go ahead and take a look at some numbers that Hardware and Box put up earlier today regarding the PCIe 4 issue. So there's one number I want to highlight from their video today, and that's where they looked at the 5700 XT, which is a PCIe 4 compatible card, and when they compared it between uh, AMD and Intel, they found that in one game, the Horizon Zero Dawn game that just came out to PC, there was actually a 6% difference at 4K between the Intel and AMD systems. Now, 
that doesn't necessarily mean 100% that it was PCIe that was the culprit behind there. It could have just been some little bit of weirdness with the coding, but there were other results that they showed, and you should definitely go watch the whole video if you haven't seen it already, that allude to the fact that yes, Gen 4 cards might actually get a small performance boost when you actually put them on a Gen 4 motherboard, at least with certain applications. And the thing I find interesting about that game getting a 6% boost is the 5700 XT, again, is a mid-range card. The 2080 Ti is like 45 to 50% faster than a 5700 XT. So if you get something that's another 50% faster than that, then yeah, I could see certain games or certain programs getting a substantial performance boost from PCIe 4. Now, will across the board there be a noticeable difference? I highly doubt it, but again, it might be enough to push enthusiasts over to AMD. So it looks like, at least in my opinion, Intel's made another huge marketing blunder, and Lord knows that's the last thing they need right now. You know, hopefully by next year they get it together, and they produce a CPU that's really awesome, because at the end of the day, really tough competition is what brings prices down. So I'm really looking forward to what they have to bring next year, as well as Zen 3, which will be launching by the end of this year, and see how they both compare. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the whole PCIe 4 debacle? Do you think it's a big deal or do you just think it's a big fat nothing burger? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.